So today's class, I don't know if it will be just today's class or also tomorrow, yeah, also tomorrow class, but the topic of today is to get started after the introduction to the course, in general, to do the introduction to the, to the field, to the topic, that is human-computer interaction. But before that, uh, you will need to get used to this, I'm sorry, or not, but still, um, well, you know what is this, right? Well, you, you know the game, or sort of the game, right? Well, for those that weren't here yesterday, sometimes during the lecture, the beginning especially, I will show you something, pictures, videos, who knows? And I will ask you if this is more something to put in a hall of fame of the best user interface that you have seen, or in a hall of shame of the best or the worst user interface you have seen. So, you know what is this, right? And. So, first of all, do you think, so, which are, let's say this way, three things that are good, good, first good things about this page. Colors. Colors. Sorry again? visualization that is related to colors in a way not only but yeah and sorry say that again you can customize it not here here you can customize it in this page Oh, you can turn on and off the visualization of single courses. Okay. Well, on colors, we can debate later on the course. Uh, but, okay, three negative things now. The overlapping, like when uh, there are uh, uh, teachings overlapping, they are more than they're more difficult to read. Okay, more difficult to read when they are overlapping. Yeah, when they're overlapping is, let's, yes, let's put this in one cons, the size of the text, overlapping or not. Also the position. What do you mean the position? It's in the top, I think it would be better to be in the center. The position of what? The of the text. Oh, the position of the text within the, okay, the position of the text can be um, different, and then? The vertical disposition, so it's stretched, right? It's, it's short. And there is another one, I think. So which is, which course is the green one? It's not easy when you want to change date, but okay, yes. But it's not, well, it's not depicted here, right? The change date, it would be probably somewhere up. Okay, uh, sorry, we were saying, um, what is the green one? We don't know. It's written somewhere here, but if you're looking at the legend, you're not looking at the timetable. And if you're looking at the timetable, if you want all the timetable, so this was an actual picture of your colleague last year. So if you're looking at the timetable, you are not seeing the pictures, the legend, right, the description. Okay, so I ask three and three. So now, would you want to put it more in the Hall of Fame and at the beginning and the end of the Hall of Fame or in the Hall of Shame at the beginning or at the end of the Hall of Shame? Okay, one decision at a time. Hall of Fame or Hall of Shame? Who we'll say fame in some position? Okay, who we'll say shame? Okay, and we need someone that this is like 50 50. Uh, so, more at the beginning of the Hall of Fame? Who we'll say at the beginning of the Hall of Fame, like the best thing you have ever seen? Okay. More at the end of the Hall of Fame? Okay. And the others that say Hall of Fame, where do you want to put it? In the middle? In the middle. Uh, Hall of Shame, the beginning of the end? 
The beginning is worst, clearly, okay. The beginning in the Hall of Shame is the worst thing you have seen, in the end is closer to the Hall of Fame, right? So, the beginning or the end? Beginning? No one beginning, end? Okay, so, in the middle, I would say, because the Hall of Fame was towards mid to end of the fame, and also the Hall of Shame was more in the middle, so it's in between. It has some things done right, right? As you said, um, well, colors, maybe not, but the calendar distribution could make sense. It's a little bit stretched, so this is a problem. There is no mapping between the color, no immediate mapping between the colors and the cores, right? Again, which is the, the green cores, we don't know. We have to scroll up, yes. You have to tell me. I don't see this. You said that this is a negative point. Colors. Yeah. Yes, colors are very, very, we will see that about visual design. Colors are very bright. Right? No, no, no. Sorry. The the and scores, the oh. Is there any option for this problem? Well, writing the name of the course somewhere. Okay, so because the name of the course is just from the up top, I know. one doesn't exclude the other, right? You can keep the selection and also replicate the information. No? <laughs> What's the problem? You can keep the selection to enable disabled courses and still say in the calendar which, the na which is the name of the course or the abbreviation or something. No? Maybe. So this is the old uh, uh, application of the um, of the calendar, right? Do you have the new one also? Some of you has the new one? How is the new one? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's better than this. So which is the better? Why is better? What's different? Which are the differences, if there are? So clearly it's a calendar, so you need to have a calendar, right? It's not that you can skip that part. Nobody knows. There is no difference. There is a big difference, but... It's loading. It's loading. <laughs> there is a big difference, but it's not working now okay never mind um, so there are space of improvements like colors and also this mapping between selection so one it's not a, it's a design choice as you will learn in this course every decision we will make on features and design will have some drawbacks so here they decided to keep as your colleague were saying two features in one. The legend that explain what the color are and the filter to enable and disable courses in the visualization below. That's a specific choice. Make a list of three items, do two works. Selecting and deselecting and so enabling and disabling and also mapping between the color and the specific course name and teacher. It's a specific choice, it has pros and cons. It's avoid replicated information but on the other part, as you scroll down, since this is a mobile application, if this was a desktop application, you would probably have less problems because bigger screen or a, or a tablet application, bigger screen. So less probably this, this kind of issue is, is less frequent. But on a mobile screen like this, this is an actual screenshot from a phone of one of your colleague of last year. If you look at the calendar, you don't look at the legend. If you look at the legend, you don't see entirely the calendar. So if you have many courses, you can um, have to go up and down multiple times. If you have just two courses, it's easier. And you need to keep in mind that, for instance, uh, Purple is human computer interaction, and I know it because I see my name here, and, but I have no idea what is green and the other colors because they weren't present in the, in the, uh, in the screenshot that your colleague 
share with me and actually this was shared also because you know purple is this course so you see that this course loves to overlap with other courses also last year this here here and here but anyway we will um so actually no this wasn't this course it was another one but still <laughs> uh, it my courses loves to overlaps apparently um so this was not even this course it was in the third year of engineering the, the degree the bachelor degree okay so this is probably it's not ter terrible it's not terrible it can be improved maybe in the new application is improved who knows um colors are another negative aspects they are very bright uh, again the mapping text is debatable it should be uh, inside outside maybe you can you should click on one of these and open the, the other details I don't know, maybe where is room R4? That probably you can tap on it. No. So if you don't know where is the room, so where is LED4? If you don't know, you will continue not to know from this page. OK, so it's probably a middle. I would say it's a little bit more on the all of shame than in the all of fame for all these things. Then there are items that are constrained like the calendar you cannot really visualize calendar in many other ways it's a calendar right and then as your colleague was saying it's maybe it's difficult to change data navigate to another data but this is something we cannot experience just by looking at one screenshot okay so this is probably a little bit more on the shame than on the fame for this reason just to uh, start reasoning. So let's move to the lecture part now. Uh, so the goal of this lecture is to speak about, well, as the title say, what is human computer interaction, what is usability, that is one big component, not the only one, but one big component of human computer interaction, and which are the processes that exist, how they relate to software engineering processes when we are speaking about software, since many of you are computer engineer, and what is meant for a design that is centered on users, uh, on people. So briefly, we are going to call it human computer interaction is actually part of a series of concepts. Um, there are clearly devices that have most of the time user interfaces. And for user interface, we mean basically everything could be a user interface, something that allow a person to interact in some way, to act on a device. So even a light switch is a user interface, is a user interface toward lights. So it shouldn't be by default a computer, a graphical user interface, it's just a general user interface. Also Google Home or Alexa or whatever are user interface. They're not graphical user interface, they are vocal user interface, but still user interface. So user interfaces are connected to devices and devices can be part of a bigger interactive system. And using these devices, this interface, are also components that are more related to the mechanical, physical parts of the world that is about ergonomics, human factor, human performance and human errors, human capability in terms of vision, sight, hearing, etc. And all of this is within a bigger field that we, can, we, we will call here, and we will use this definition of human-computer interaction. There are other two definitions that are very close, um, in some cases a little bit updated, in some cases a little bit more general than what we meant here. Uh, one is man-machine interaction. Uh, so to you, what is the difference between, so no, let's start from here, human-machine interaction. So to you, what is the difference between human machine and human computer interaction. What's the difference? Well, there is a word that's different, no? So which is entail this word. Our synonyms are very close, right, no? Almost. Almost. So computer means 
computer means define computer is this a computer yes okay good good starting point is this a computer good another starting point is this a computer yes um, I don't have other computers here around but um, is that could be considered a computer the video projector It's more a computer or a machine? Mm. Is the coffee machine more a machine or a computer nowadays? Sorry, nowadays. I need to specify nowadays, not 20 years ago or 50 years ago. So what makes a computer a computer? Well, there is software, clearly. There is a processor, right? There is hardware components that makes it a computer architecture. So some of you are still following computer architectures you know, that are components that, are, that make the definition of computer, processor, etc. Mm? So this is more computer. Machine, you also interact with not always uh, less, but we also interact, may interact with non-computerized things mm? that are machine. If you... Um, have to the opportunity to, I don't know, use a car. No, the, yesterday we were speaking about Model T and Harry Ford. That is a machine. There is nothing about computer there, but you still interact in some way with the car. You, you drive it, you move something. So you have a user interface on it. It's different. So human machine interaction is a little bit larger as field that includes also non-computerized, not electronic machine, like mechanical machine. That is still important. So nowadays there are almost synonyms since the non-computerized, non-electronic machine are always less and less and less. So they're used as synonyms, but still there is this uh, semantical difference. And this other one, this other one, this other one is outdated. Why it's outdated? It's clearly semantically the same thing of human machine interaction, but why it's outdated? Yeah, say that again. Because it's crude, yes, yeah, because say man machine interaction and women machine interaction, I'm sorry you cannot interact. Right? No, clearly. Mm -hmm. So it's exclusive from man. So it's outdated from that perspective. It's used now human or person that is more appropriate and inclusive than man. Mm -hmm. So this is an outdated term that is not used anymore. But still, you can find it somewhere, especially in very, very, in quite old books or references. And then there is a user-centered design here that is one of the main, not the only one, but one of the main, one of probably the most important and foundational process to create uh, user interfaces, interactive system within human computer interaction as a field. Hmm? Uh, so in brief, what is human computer interaction? Human computer interaction is uh, an academic field and it's multidisciplinary by nature. So it started from computer scientists and psychologists, and now includes also sociologists, lawyers, etc., etc., because investigate people and computers, and people are messy by definition. So it involves also uh, non-scientists, non-computer scientists, and non-computer engineer in that. And as a field, if we want to give, give a definition, it's concerned, and I'm reading with the design, evaluation, and implementation of interactive computer system for human use. So very generic definition. And for design, we, need, we, we meant to, uh, to, to create, hmm, then to implement, and then evaluate the uh, computing system. So three main factors. We first need to think about how things work and how to make it work in a good way. Then we need to implement that in practice, and then we need to evaluate that. And this will be also three main topics we will uh, cover. And together with this, it's also studied the major phenomena surrounding them. So for instance, what are the problems of using AI within an interactive system? 
with respect to a known an interest system without AI. And in both two entities, one is clearly the human and the other one is the computer, that determine, as written here, each other behavior over time. So I interact with a computer, the computer reply to me in some way, and over time our um, behavior change according to my inputs and the outputs of the computer and vice versa. And all of this it's framed in terms of human goal and related task. All of this starts with a person, a group of people, as a goal, something that they want to accomplish, and a series of tasks to how to accomplish that. And we will also, let me stress this goal and task, because we will see again goal and task tomorrow, later today, but also tomorrow. And as a field is quite old, and we use in practice, well, not you here, well, some of you, yes, also here, some artifacts that, some devices that was built from research purposes in this field. That is this thing here. What is this thing here? Mouse. That's one of the first, the, the first mouse that was invented. And still, well, not that wood-based device, uh, we are still using mouses from that form factor with the same logic of uh, behaviors, right? And you know what is this instead? You may imagine what is resembled nowadays it is. What do you remind, what reminds it to you? Sorry? Keyboard. Yeah, the keyboard is just here, this, this space up. Calculator. This is bigger. Tablet. A tablet. So this is considered, this is not a tablet, this is called Dynabook and was created at Xerox Park by Alan Kay in the US in the 60s, I think. Uh, Alan Kay was in the group of people that created the object oriented programming as a paradigm. So you, you can thank him if you want and his, friend, his colleagues. Um, and also imagine this as a device, especially for children, that was less complicated than computers to do creative work, to draw, to write, uh, portable, etc. And this was 1960, so not exactly yesterday. And now we have tab tablets, but this was consist is considered now one of the uh, progenitor as an idea of current tablets. And also this. Uh, stem from this field, actually. So we said the computer, the human computer interaction is multidisciplinary here, at least a series of um, discipline that intersect with that um, and inform us on what to do. And so I said yesterday that some of the things we were going to see are theoretical and this part is still theoretical because we need to understand, first of all, people um, and so we need to speak a little bit of how people, how we do things. And we do it immediately without thinking, but there is reason behind. We will dedicate not a lot of hours, but we still need to. So the goal of Young Group Interaction is, um, it has three ingredi ingredients. One is users, people, the one that will use our system. One is the computer, that's easy one. And the other one is the task or the series of tasks that the person or the people wants to accomplish using the computerized system. And all of many of the things start from task, something that you want to accomplish with an application, with a system, etc. So we are, we are not designing things just for the joy of doing that, but because we want to enable people to fulfill a task, fulfill a need, as we said yesterday also. So as the goal, the system must support the user task or tasks with a focus on usability that for now we can say that a system should be useful, usable and used. And if you think if uh, one of these but not the others is something that's not going to work or it will be soon be replaced by a competitor, for instance. So if you have something that's usable and is used but it's not usable, then as soon as something that is more usable than that exists, you will probably see people switching to the more usable 
so the less painful uh, system, less frustrating. I don't know if there is here the, the same person of yesterday say that frustration of using technology, but still, um, so this is much in line with that. And similarly, if you have something that is usable, but it's totally useless and it's not used, that will likely die at a certain point, even if it's wonderful, but it's not used. So that's why the tasks are important. And clearly the ingredients, we can, we should hmm, go a little bit there. So uh, humans as their own, let's say, input and output mechanism and computer as their own input output mechanism. So humans are the visory sensory uh, system that are visual, auditory, optic, and spatial, right? So visual which is our, sen our visual device, let's say device in a sense. Ah, it was not so hard, right? So auditory, ears, ears. optics, hands. Spatial, spatial is a little bit difficult. Which is the main thing we have that give us sense of space. More ears than eyes, yes. And so it's our spatial. If we have some trouble with the ears, we can have trouble in the spatial. And eyes help compensate, so they work together. And which is the most used sensory system we use? Eyes. So our behavior is extremely visual. So it's the most used sense, the visual um, system. Acting system, hands, we grab things, we push things, we press things, etc. Voice, we speak. And head, body, we move, we do gestures. And all of these can be potentially interpreted by a computer to provide a suitable uh, answer. So actually it means one sensory system. We still have one, mess, one, one other sensory system here. that we don't tip right now, we don't use with computers, but which is? So we have five senses here, just three listed, right? Smell, and then the other one, so two we're missing. Taste. So we don't have yet uh, olfactory interfaces or taste-based interfaces, but who knows? <laughs> Clearly, visual is the most prominent sensory system followed by auditory and then optic and then all the others. Uh, follow, but, but still they provide important information to us as people. Also smell. Hmm? If we smell something bad, we react in some way. Hmm? So we are sensitive of, of all these things. And then there are cognitive processes in terms of perception, in terms of memory that we have. And all of this makes, let's say, the ingredient make part of the human, what we can, are capable of. And each of us use these sensory acting and cognitive processes in different way, and especially some part of the population maybe has an extreme uh, limitation of some of these. And so the user interface, how can be adapted or usable also from their perspective and not just from a person that has all the system and the processes perfectly working. That's one question for or later, clearly. And similarly, the computer has its own input and output peripheral that sort of match, in some cases, the sensory. So we have the keyboard, the mouse, the microphone, touch screens, sensors, light sensor that allow the computer to react, maybe in some cases, and then output with screen, audio, uh, etc. Virtual reality and augmented reality headset, they still are an output device, different from the 2D screen, etc. That should be easier for, for you. So, um, we spoke about human and we spoke about computers. We didn't cover interaction, right? So we said human are people with some physical and not physical processes going on and sensory, computer same, and interaction. So interaction is difficult to define. Um, 
In 2017, the researcher from um, Finland and Copenhagen, I think, um, from Halto University and University of Copenhagen, tried to define that. And actually, they didn't find one single view of interaction, but many concepts. So interaction is sometimes a dialogue, a communication between the two entities. In other cases, it's just a tool use. I want to use a tool, and I use a tool. I'm very, very uh, precise about the task and the tool. And as soon as the task is over, I will dismiss the tool. Um, it could be an experience that involves feelings, expectation, memories, desire to use it more, use it less, uh, in both positive or negative ways. Um, it could be for acting control. So there are many definitions of interactions that goes in. What we can say is that interaction is not, let's start from not, is not that a computer and a person are engaged in some way. It's not a relationship between a computer and a person. It's, as I said before, two entities separate with their own set of skills and features and characteristics and requirement that working, operating together, determine each other behavior other, over time. And this each other behavior could be of many type, including mechanical, statistical, and structural. And you see, this will happen again, the ultimate metric of interaction, how well the interaction is going, whatever definition we want to choose, are people with their goal and task. So how well I can support a person or a set of people, it depends on the kind of application, realizing their goal in some specific task is what measure a good level of interaction between a human and a computer. Okay, so this is the definition of the three um, main words of the uh, of the definition of the of the, of the word human-computer interaction. So moving on, we make this assumption. So for the rest of the at least this class, but we are making this assumption, and let's say that this assumption are true. So we always have a user, a person, that wants to accomplish some goal in a specific application domain. So when you use the calendar from table, why you open it? What's your goal? Be the courses. So if you want to watch a movie, you don't open that, right? So according to the goal, According to a specific application domain, you do some actions. That is, in terms of task, so let's say that your goal is seeing where is the next lecture of this course. Which are the tasks you are doing to do this with the app? Open the app. Go on calendar. Scroll down or deselect the course if you want to appear it and, and remove the others and look at the specific day. These are steps of the task hmm? to accomplish your goal that is to know what is the when is the next class of this course. Hmm? And, well, I mean, not in that app, but that app is specifically on an application domain, which is which is the application domain of that application? Which are the target user of that application? Students. students. More specifically, which students? Polytechnical students? University students? If we imagine that this app is going uh, over the polytechnical for whatever reason. Um, why this is important? So maybe not in, this, in the calendar page, but sometimes you may find credits, right? This course is six credits. You know what is a credit, right? So if you go to a um, high school student, 
and tell him, him or her that you are following a sixth credit course. What's the understanding of this person is? Nothing, because they don't have, they are not university students, so they have no idea what is a credit, right? So application live in a specific domain that in this case is university, which has its own wording, it has its own jargon, it has its own processes. If you want to enroll to a course, you will have to do the um, plan, right? Both plan, the piano carriera and I don't know, I don't know the English word for the piano carriera and the course schedule. Uh, one is the two years program, the other one is just one year. And this is a process that you have to do here. And if you switch university, you maybe it's another process. And if you are an Erasmus student, probably the process is, is different because you are just here for six months, for instance, or for one year. So each of them has domain processes that are related to that specific domain and enables you to do some action, some goals, to fulfill some goals. Otherwise, you're not going to use the application if it doesn't satisfy your goals. Uh, and the domain clearly can be wide. This is university, but if you think about any general purpose application, the domain will be wider than university and courses. Uh, tasks are operation to manipulate the concept domain and so the goal is fulfilled by performing one or more tasks and interaction studies the relation between the user and the computer, the system mm, that allow you to accomplish the goal through task in a specific domain. Mm. So the system, the application, possess a state and speak its own language, in a way, and the person possess another state that includes understanding the system state, includes the intention to perform a task and speak its own language. So in many cases, when there is frustration in using an interface, is because the person has some assumption, starts from a position, speak a certain language, and the application another and so there is no communication there is a wrong communication between the two mm? so this is formalized by norman that is the same person of the uh, the design of every everyday objects everyday things the, the the coffee maker that is that burns you if you use it of yesterday described in this way it say that if one side we put the user and the other side we put the system which with its own input or system the user executes something on the system and the system giving the output as a phase that is evaluation of the output. And this is a cycle that always happens. So one very simple example of this, of this, of this and one of the concepts is how many times, okay, how many times you go in front of a door and you don't know if you push or press the door? Many times, right? Who is responsible of that? You or the door? The door. So you see something, you have your own state, you have your own assumption, you are used to press, when you see a door in a certain way, you press the door, but in that case, since the door was made differently, you don't press, you, want to, you press, but it's not, nothing is happening. So you are, in that moment evaluating the state of the door, okay, the state is not changing, and so I, I will probably need to read if it's written pull, or um, pull the door to open it. So that door that is open, would you push or pull? Why you won't push? It's written somewhere? No. It's part of what you learn about the world, as everybody learn about the world, as human being, and given that the door is made in a certain way, we know that it is push and not pull. And when we have doubts, it's because the door is made in not a clear way according to what we know about that. So this is a very simple and trivial example, but it's happened so many times that it's easy to understand. This, in a more complicated way, happens, the same thing happens with more complex system than a door with an handle. There is some assumption we have and the system is not following our assumption. 
it has its own assumption made by its own creator. And pay attention, because when you are creating an application, developing an application, you are the one that makes the door and the end all. So you should be sure to met not your own expectation, not the technological expectation, but the expectation of the users that you want to have for your application. So normal define that the user as before acting on a system, whatever system, not, not even a, not only a computer system, as four steps. The first thing is we want to we establish the goal. And the goal in, with respect to a door is to go to the other side, for instance. Then we form an intention, that is the how. Okay, to go to the other side, I need to operate on the door. And then specify the action sequence. And we do it immediately, but we still do it. So we want to go over the door because we want to go home. We need to do something to operate the door. And then we need to specify the action sequence that in that case, in the case of that door, we'll be pushing the end all. And then we actually push the end all. At this point, the system, whatever it is, do something, and we perceive the state. The door is still closed, or the door is open. We interpret the system state. If the door is closed, something is wrong, probably. If the door is open, probably it's good. And then we evaluate the system state. OK, the door is open now. I can go after the door. The door is closed. So something didn't work. And so I will go back here and we'll need to reconfirm the goal, maybe change the intention, maybe change the action sequence. If I push, I need to pull, etc. So this is eight, seven steps or something that we immediately do with every system in one millisecond or less. But still, these are the process, the cognitive process, the representation of the cognitive process we are going through. And everybody's going through. And Norman say that the distance hmm, of difficulties between the user and the system in this execution and this evaluation stage is called gulf of execution and gulf of evaluation. Hmm. So more the gulf are big, more difficult is to interact with the system. If the gulf are smaller, so the user and the system are closer in a way, it's more easier to um, to perform the action and how we can make the uh, the gulf smaller well we should for instance be sure that the system and the user speak the same language so that if we want to push a door i will use an end all that for it's a standard for pushing and vice versa so easing and if the system state is not clear, the goal of evaluation will be larger because I need to, un to think what is meaning. So in case of the door, it's very, very simple, but imagine um, some wonderful error message, let's say error five. What's the state of the system? Error. What I can do? I don't know, because error five is not informative and doesn't, this doesn't give me enough information to interpret and evaluate the system state. And so this is the gulf of evaluation that is larger. Again, I'm just using the example of the door because it's so simple and trivial and that everybody experienced that. But if you scale it a more complex system, you can imagine that these are uh, more complex. So imagine you have to, I don't know, something that Polytechnico does well, uh, sorry, does bad. If, if it's well, you, we are not discussing, right? Some process you have recently done. Choose the courses. Okay, let's say, oh, enroll for an exam. It's not recent, maybe, but. Um, so you establish the goal, enroll to the exam, you form an intention, and then you specify the action sequence, which are. Which are the action sequence to enroll to an exam? 
Yes, open the application. Select the voice, let's say, exam booking. I have no idea, so you have to tell me. <laughs> Look through the list, because there is a list. Find the one you're looking for. Select. And that's the action, because if you select, so you already here have specified an action sequence, and you execute the action, but it's actually more action, because you open the app. And when you open the app, the system that is a mobile phone, React, how React? It opens the app, likely. Otherwise, it doesn't, uh, and everything crash. And so you perceive the system state, and you can say, OK, something is wrong, right? And all of this is done immediately. And then let's say that the app opens, you select uh, book exams, right? And let's say that this is not opening, or it takes three seconds to open, and you are perceiving the system state, waiting, you're interpreting the system state, and according to your experience, you can say, okay, three seconds on this app is fine, let's give it one minute, and then let's do something different. Or, you say, no, it's strange, it took so much time, and so you're evaluating the state, and you decide to execute another action. So this is a loop. And every time you have an error or a sleep uh, problem, you are actually uh, um, increasing these gulfs one or the other. It depends where the problems arise. Okay, this is the model. This is another picture of the, exactly the same model. So we can uh, skip it. And a few years later, just to uh, quickly, uh, other two people, Abel and Bill, take the same model and just make the user interface explicit. It's exactly the same model with exactly the same uh, GALF evaluation, but they just add one thing that is actually could be important. That is that the user adds its own language. I want to book the exam. Uh, the user interface adds its own language. Maybe it doesn't say book the exam. Maybe it say reserve or enroll. And so there is a small gap here in languages, which is the right one, which is the alternative, the best alternative to make this understandable. And then there is a system that it's, that's its own language. And so how Politecnico call it officially, or how the Italian Ministry of Education call it officially. So credits, you know, credits are not called credits. Credits, it's the short term is CFU, I don't know in English uh, the, the translation, uh, well, it's Credito Formativo Universitario, so it should be University Formative Credits. So credit is just a shorter version. So officially, in the documents, it should say CFU in Italian, not credits. Hmm? And so it has its own language and same things for the output. So this is the same model, just add one layer that is the user interface that can have a different language from the user and the system. This makes things even more complicated. And uh, well, and they also define this in four specific way, but it's the same as before. So what happens when we are in the Gulf of execution? So behind, when we are still forming the intention before doing an action, which are the errors, and there is an asterisk there for a reason, uh, in the Gulf execution. There are two kinds of errors. One are slips and one are mistakes. So slips are the person formulated the right action but failed to execute the action correctly. Like I, you, you want to click the enroll to an exam icon but you click the next icon or you double click too slowly. Uh, these are slips. It's not that you cannot enroll to the exam, you just click on the next icon, so you're clear in another page, in another function. So these are easier, because these, under the, the, the creator of the application perspective, might be corrected for with a better interface. For instance, if many people just click one button instead of the other, maybe you can separate better, better space between the two buttons. Different layout, different lighting, different colors, if this is a common, a common slip. 
in the sense of error. And then there are the mistakes that are the more, let's say, serious thing from a user interface perspective. So mistakes are when you don't know the system well, because it's the first time you use it, because it's a redesign of the system, and you may not formulate the right goal. So you want to zoom in, and you click the, uh, the lens, but the lens is for search. Or vice versa, you want to search, you click at the lens, but the lens is for zoom. So this is a mistake. It's not a slip. It's not that you press the wrong button. The button is there. It's the intention that doesn't match. It's your intention doesn't match the response of the system. Hmm? So in this case, we say that the user mental model, that is how we perceive how, which are the, our assumption, and the system state or the system mental model are not aligned, and the user mental model of the system is not correct. So how we think the system will work is not correct. And again, this is never fault of the people, just fault of the system. And in this case, on the system, it either requires more a redesign, because it's a considerable issue, or, in some cases, training to the people in some specific uh, domain. If you think hospitals, nurses, that could be training pilot of airplanes, that will be training in place, right? You cannot imagine training for the Polito app in case of mistakes. So about errors, that's the asterisk as before, human errors are never fault of people, but they are the results of bad design of the application, of the system, whatever. And why they happen? Because there, there is a list, but the short version of that list is that people are messy. We are messy, we make problem, right? So we tend to be imprecise, distracted, we surely are not omniscient, and we can be in bad mood, and we can have other things going on in our life when we are booking an exam. We are not 100% always focused on the task at hand, even if we have a goal, even if it's important in that moment. So system design should in some way anticipate this human behavior, knowing that sleeps and mistake will happen, uh, minimize the chance of action that are inappropriate, so forbidding some action, or providing uh, information, suggestion, warnings to avoid issues, uh, maximize the possibility of discovery and repairing an inappropriate action, where discovery means allowing people to freely navigate, for instance, in an application without breaking even, anything. Uh, and repairs mean go back, undo the action, for instance. And enable users to understand the state of the system and build their own model, knowing that we will start, unless it's something really, really different from everything else, with a background of what we expect from a system to be. So let me make this example. If you are a polytechnical student, after how many of you did the bachelor degree not here and are not Erasmus students? Okay. So was the same thing, the same system, the same application, the same behavior, the same processes between your previous university and this one? Yes, no. No. And when you came here, you came with your assumption of how things worked in your previous university. It's normal. It's not nothing strange. So in interacting with Polytechnico, you may have had some more difficulties than people that were here for the bachelor degree. So three years here, they were used how to open a ticket and wait days and days and days from the secretary to reply. Maybe in other universities it doesn't happen. I really hope so. I'm not sure, but I hope so. Okay, so people came with their own expectation and assumption. And you, as creator of system, should be able to understand their assumption that will be different from yours. So this is an example of articulation. So let me enlarge this. Um, so what is doing to you 
So these are switches. So this is a smart home in Val d'Aosta, in Verres. Uh, and these are switching on a wall, like this, this actual picture. And so what do you think this button here, the two arrows, one left and one right, will do? If you don't see, there is a picture of a house. This was a flat, was an apartment. A house with, let's say, an open, a door that is open and a door that is closed. So you are in this house, you see this button, you have a door there, and maybe you have a door there, and so here there is a house with a door, here there is something that slides uh, vertically, left and right, and here, let's skip that for now. So let's say that you have two things in the room, doors, windows, it's a room, right? And you want to open that door, and that door can only be opened with pressing a button. Which one you press? The left one? Top left one? They could also be for locking down, yeah. yeah because uh, like in the picture around there is uh, a door with sliding, so that we think that the one is like that one is for open close. So this was the actual problem that they had in that house, not knowing which button to press. So how they solve it? They press it all and see what happens. If there are four buttons, let's press it and let's see what happens. And but this is working for the person that presses the button. How do you share the knowledge to the other? They put a piece of paper and write what the button was doing. Because nobody was able to use that. And since you cannot open the door without pressing the button, you are forced to. So this is a problem in articulation, right? Articulation is easier between the task language, the user language, and the the intention and the user interface. So here the user interface are this icon here with two arrows and the buttons that you are left and right, but your door, you don't open it left and right. You push or pull the door. So also the arrows here are misleading. And then if you have multiple doors, which is the right one? And why this is red? And this is not red? What's the purpose of it? There were no reason. They were just randomly colored. There is one, no, no reason. But you ask your, this thing, right? You ask this thing, why this one is red and the other one is not? Is that that door or the other door or that window? Because everything was automated there. So this is a problem of articulation that people find a workaround, write it in a piece of paper, the results, the operation. But you. If you were the one designing this home, designing this interface, this button, would it be proud to have people put a piece of paper like press here to do this? Because it's not understandable otherwise, right? Uh, so here it's an, it's an example of presentation. So this is Microsoft. It's not the smaller company. So this one was probably some um, um, company, small company in, in Val d'Aosta doing this thing for the house. OK, this is Microsoft. So here there is a problem with presentation. Hmm? And again, presentation is that stage here between the system and the output. So we are in the evaluation. So look at this part, effects, which are the allowed combination. So according to the meaning of the checkbox, checkbox means multiple selection. So since they are all checkbox, I could imagine that I can select all of them. So I can have, according to what the interface is communicating, without knowing what they mean, clearly. So imagine you are not understanding English at all, and you are just seeing that with um, some, some words here. And you know that these are checkbox because checkbox are sort of standard everywhere. So you know that you can select multiple of these. Mm -hmm. But if you understand instead, you know 
that you cannot have in the same moment a strike through, a double strike through, a superscript, a subscript, small caps, all caps, and hidden. It cannot be con in the same moment this eight thing. Is either subscript or superscript? Is either double struck out or, or single struck out? Is either small caps or all caps? It cannot be both. It cannot be all caps or all small caps. You have to decide. So uh, this work, if you try to select strike, strike through and double strike through, when you select double strike through, the other one got disabled. So the logic behind that is working. It's the presentation that's a problem here. So how can Microsoft, again, it's not the smallest company in the world, so it's fine to make this, it happens to make this problem on a small part, not central part of the um, world in this case. So how can you imagine to, let's say, as a presentation matter, solve it, for instance? But the checkbox, singular, so the checkbox singular are not anymore checkbox are um, uh, radio button. And radio button means only one. So you are switching the problem on the other side. So I'm saying that I either have strike out or all the others, but I can have a strike through superscript and all caps. I can have multiple combinations, just I cannot have all of them. So the first two are mutually exclusive. The other two are mutually exclusive, and these other two are mutually exclusive, and it then is independent. Like, like enable disable. So one option could be uh, selecting so like strict through, double strict through. You select either one of the other. So. Having here, strike through with one and the other, so different layout, other options. Columns. 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 Yeah, put in three different columns, maybe with a subtitle or a small title. So it's a matter of presentation, it's not a matter of logic, right? Because then it works clearly. So small changes, but a redesign of very small part. And I, I, I like to show this because actually not to because this will happen also to you problem presentation problem user interface but so microsoft does these kind of errors still not in a clearly very very important part of the products but because it's the advanced font selection but still it may happen also to them so it also may happen to us but we we need to know better and we try to avoid it um. So which components happens in the, uh, these four stages? So uh, between the user interface and the user, the articulation observation is most of the times part of ergonomics, like the buttons, et cetera, the mouse, the key to press, et cetera. It's not really focused on this course. The uh, other side of the execution that's called performance is about dialogues, widgets, buttons, or things that we can press on screen. It's available, we can reach with devices like a mouse, a pointer, etc. Presentation is about visualization, toolkit for user interface. So uh, there are design languages. So iOS has its own design languages, Android has its own design language to make familiarity for things, to avoid problem in presentation because all the applications should look like a certain way under a certain condition. Uh, screen design, so the layout, the colors, etc. And also observation is still part of the ergonomics. So we are mostly focusing, we will mostly focus on this, um, on this side, since uh, we are mostly in a computer engineer um, course. And as a matter of framework, so here, as a matter of framework, in this side, um, we have all these major user interface style. Mm -hmm. So we have common line interface, Command prompt, the terminal, etc. Uh, we have natural language, vocal or written, but still natural language as a way of input and output of system with problem or not. We have question answer and query dialogue. So the system asks a question, we reply, and then going forth. We have form fields, surveys, 
questionnaires. Uh, we have what we mentioned yesterday, Windows icon, Minus, and Pointer interface that are the classical desktop computer interface. We have mobile, we have point and clicks, and we have 3D interfaces, like, like in virtual reality, in augmented reality. So these are a lot of major styles, and each of them has its own characteristics and features. So, let me start this. We will not end it. So, in this context, they append many design processes and frameworks. So one of that that we mentioned is called the user-centered design. That doesn't name say you are to design centered with the user. And this is proven to avoid the risk, especially in software, to avoid the risk of software pressure failure, and estimated 50% of the failure are affected by a bad developer user communication. So user-centered design takes the needs, the wants, the limitation of the end user of application of a product and takes it into account on each phase of the design process so that you can find and solve issues on the user perspective always on early in every stage of the design. So the benefits of this is that clearly since you involve users since day one and repeatedly along the process the results is easier to learn because you tested it so many times and get it information so many times that it's by default easier to learn it has faster performance as less human errors and encourage users to discover features and etc so all positive the issue is clearly more practical, like how to find users. If I have a five-step process, I need to involve how many users? For how long? Who they should be? How motivated they should be? Which is their language? How we extract user needs, business needs, organizational implication at every single step? So it's a lot of work. It has huge benefits, but especially in companies, applying purely the user-centered design has a lot of difficulties, also cost-related difficulties, because you do something, you need to bring in 20 people, and then you discover something, you bring in other 20 people, etc., etc., etc. And you need to find all these people available for you. So the process we are going to follow in this course is mimic this process, so we will try to include users as much as possible but not at every single step the step in which we will for instance say we take some expert instead of some users of the system and we will have expert giving inputs to the system an evolution of ucd of user center design is participatory design in which instead of getting user every time you do something so it design something, call user, implement something, call user, re-implement something, call users, etc. Uh, they are directly involved in the design of the thing and the application they use. So users participate to design. User becomes designer of the application. Uh, this is very interesting as a method. We are not going to use this at all uh, because it need all the knowledge that would make the user-centered design work and more. So you need to be expert in design methods before applying this, because otherwise you will make... So the user is a designer, but it's mediated by you. It's not that they decide whatever they want, because otherwise we are in the case of wants versus need that we were saying yesterday. Hmm? So in participatory design, you carefully engage a group of users mediating their ideas on your experience as a designer, as a creator, as a developer. And you can do it with discussion, with scenarios, with dramatization even, creating with them prototypes, some paper, so a lot of technology, etc. But clearly this is, as I say here, high reliant on the skill of the group moderator le leaders, because you need to filter ideas, you need to understand if it's something not possible to realize or not. 
and this is more effective also with more mature and prepared user population less with kids elderly etc uh, because of the population so you keep them engaged and maybe uh, it's more difficult to keep a child engaged for a long time in designing something you need to make them play or do other things or motivate that difficulty uh, another parallel so while participatory design is a, in a sense an evolution of ucd uh, there is another um, design method that is just to give you the picture hmm? uh, is agile interaction design that is uh, the let's say the counterpart of the agile development of software engineering so it's an evolutionary development and focus on low cost main interaction prototypes uh, requi require what's called extreme usability so fast usability expansion many times because we have this um, this cycle the rapid release cycle and it's uh, if it's one user it's more used in the maker culture and a recent evolution a recent design process is that design thinking that is not so different from user-centered design under a perspective but add some very interesting point. Uh, and it was created by IDEO, that is a company, uh, very, ex very known in the design world, in the industrial design world. And um, it has some key features, like you know, integrating the need of people. This is also user-centered design. Uh, the possibility of technology and requirement for business. It has a specific focus also on business. But most importantly, uh, follow this five-step process that could be also iterated again so you see in this picture you go from step one to two and from step one to the prototype and then to put it back to edit and and move on so it's dynamic it's not a linear process uh, in which let's say the four of these is something that also we will meet during the course in our process because we first need to define the needs and then we need to ideate what we are going to do. We need to design the system, then we will prototype, and then we evaluate the solution. So these same steps are similar to the user-centered design steps and the steps we are going to follow, but they add one. That is, also we are doing that. We are doing the user needs research, but they call it emphasize, because they also want to explore the emotional aspects of this experience. So it's not just understanding needs they also include emotions feelings and other cultural contextual aspects way more than we will do here so this is more recent again a little bit more advanced in a way than uh, the previous system also more recent and finally really finally uh, it's service design service design is actually a shift from products to so selling products to selling services so instead of selling a car in the example of a specific brand uh, there is a shift to send cars as a tool for some people that wants to do an experience that wants to reach a goal it's a matter of different perspective and it's a matter of integration of different services like you buy a car because the car is product versus to buy the service that includes the car the driver and the path that brings you from your home to the friend's home and back after a while so it's more about the service the complete experience starting from business resources and processes not just to the end product to sell and also this builds upon five key principles one of these is user centered like user centered design the other one is co-creative, so sort of participatory in a way that includes all, all the relevant stakeholders from business, from end users, from product to experience to service, etc. So this is another process. So I'm telling you just to say there are many processes. Uh, the let's say the the oldest and most consolidated is user-centered design. The other are evolution or variation from these in positive sense adding complexity or adding specific features that are more related to specific time like service design is something that exists only recently with a shift again from selling a product from a company to selling a service an experience hmm, together with the product or trying to selling the service and experience and what we 
will do tomorrow is to have a look at the human centered process we will sort of use and uh, try to summarize the key aspects of these previous, the previous um, processes so that we have a practical way to conduct our uh, and in general you also have a practical way to conduct the construction of a user interface and interactive system but this will be tomorrow in some i room only for one hour and a half i'm still here five minutes for question otherwise have a good evening and good night <laughs>